Central Kentucky, and uh, it feels like fall, and so we are excited and blessed and happy to see the sun back out again. I'm sure you are too. So, good evening, and thank you so much for joining me. I feel grateful and blessed that you take the time to watch it live and or play it back and or play it back again, and I feel a tremendous sense of responsibility to bring you exactly what I told you that I would, and uh so for those of you who are joining us from Texas, uh, first let me just say that you are not alone. Uh, if you are in a community where your, your community has been destroyed or you've lost something or been affected by Hurricane Andrew, uh, Hurricane Harvey, did I just say Andrew, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Hurricane Harvey, I pray that this half hour will give you a tremendous fresh hope um, and that you can grab a new hope for yourself and that as you embrace the American spirit of building and rebuilding that you truly will understand and embrace and, 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 and get from so many people that it's the, the human spirit of grit and survival and overcoming that is, is so alive in all of us. And one of the most endearing things to me is to see a neighbor who didn't know his or her neighbor arm in arm regardless of uh, whether I knew you yesterday or not, whether we are the same in any shape, form, or fashion regarding yesterday's political disagreement, we are all one. And I have loved that piece of this catastrophe. It was 25 years ago on August 24th. I was living in South Florida and my late husband Jerry and I evacuated from our home in South Florida when Hurricane Andrew, a Category 5 storm hit, and it flattened Homestead, Florida. It was devastating, and so um, I remember two days later being in a truck up from Kroger that one of my consultants had borrowed, and we took down just necessities and water, driving over live wires, and there were no stoplights and no street signs and virtually no sign of what had been. And so I want you to know that on some level, I do uh, get what you're going through as many of us do, and you are not alone. We are going to be build with you to be to to be to rebuild uh, your lives, your homes, your businesses, and you're going to emerge stronger than ever. If you think that something I'm going to say on this message, uh, whether you're from Texas or Kalamazoo, then share it with your buddies. Maybe your family and friends would benefit from this message. And if not, you know what? Maybe they could better understand what you're doing if they listen to this message. I'm going to be as brief as I can. Ooh, I really am. So take courage. Uh, I, I, I believe that, uh, <laughs> that I've planned 30 minutes, but then it got a little bit longer. And so uh, for the next half hour, okay, maybe 45 minutes because I got a little carried away in preparing. I got a little excited. We're going to explore the process and the pathway that's going to bring you the defined outcome that you want to have in your life and your work in the next 90 days. We're going to stop just short of the end of this year, December 1st, 2017. How do you want the end of this year to be for you in your life? How will it go down in the history books of your life? The last month of this year, will it look pretty much the same as today? When you hit December 1st, 2017, is it going to look kind of like today? Or is it going to look radically different? Because you know what I believe in a 90-day process. You can change your body. You can change your relationships. You can change your finances. You can change your career. 90 days can change anything. And I'm going to give you a big launch into it right now. So December 1st, 2017, will one area of your life look radically different? If you have a 90-day planner, go get it. Go get it uh, out of your office. Go pick it up. I'll say a little bit of something. Go run and get it or uh, grab a notebook or an iPad on top of that to take some notes. Um, just so that you know, I'm not teaching the entire Design Your Life process tonight. <laughs> um, there are many free instructional videos on PamelaShaw.pink, and I hope you will help yourself to that. And uh, go enjoy them if you're looking for a specific detail. Tonight is going to be about blasting off and then structuring the middle in between a week, which you can do tonight to set up this next week. And it's kind of like tomorrow's free. I, I forgot that it was Labor Day. I mean, I didn't forget it was Labor Day, but I forgot that it was Labor Day where I normally go to my mother's house and help her clean up her garage. So I was getting dressed, uh, to freshening up my makeup to get on with you. And I was like, oh, tomorrow's Labor Day. So I texted her, mom, what time do you want me here? She goes, you know, we cleaned it so great last year. It doesn't need cleaning. So I'm like, I feel like it's a free day. <laughs> I'm not cleaning a garage tomorrow. So um, I have assignments for you guys tonight. And it's, it's going to launch you into an amazing place. And so get your paper, get your design book, get your iPad. Uh, when I travel the Design Your Life, Live Your Vision workshop, it's about four hours long. Um, really at its best, it's an all-day workshop. And so in no way is there time to walk through everything tonight. 
or in all of the principles behind the book, I'm going to hit a few critical pieces to set up your 90 day goal and your week ahead. So when you get clarity on those two places, your 90 day goal and your week ahead, when you get clarity on those two places, we're already off to a wildly winning start. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, so be thinking about what three or four things do you want to accomplish by December 1st, 2017 that would make you say, this has been the most amazing year? I mean, I did it, I waited till the end but on December 1st, what three or four things, be thinking in the back of your mind, what three or four things would cause you to say, this has been the best year and that you could point to today as a blast off for the trajectory of where you're going. Hey, let's face it. We all have some things that we wish we'd done, said we were going to do, meant to do, and it's behind us. It's yesterday and it's not, it's not even worth laboring and, and adding guilt, which turns into shame if improperly metabolized. We're not going to go there. We're starting today from this point forward. That's where I have the greatest hope for all of us. So let me just first cover some basics. Okay. So uh, I've got my design book down here. This is my today page. This is what this looks like. So today, this is what today was. Boom. Why a design book over and with the yellow sticky pad? Why a design planner over a traditional date book? Why? I laugh to myself, not at others, not at other people, um, but... Uh, and, and never at anyone else because we all learn differently and our brains respond to different styles. Our brains respond to color differently. But let me say that the traditional date book user, the tool schedules an appointment. Great. That is great. But how many appointments do you hold in a day? Be honest. A traditional date book schedules appointments. But how many appointments do you really need to know that you have during a day? Now, even though I schedule appointments in mine too, <laughs> but a traditional date book, now come on. If you're a medical professional, hair, nail salon tech, massage technician, and you schedule by the hour and people come to you in a location, then that would require an appointment book. For leaders or people growing their entrepreneurial life, however, your business, you will need to hold appointments, but to grow your leadership, you've got to grow yourself. To grow your leadership, you've got to grow yourself. And although it might be easier um, for you, if you could just say, you know, at 5 a.m. tomorrow, I'm disciplined forever, and um, I'm gonna wake up and start the framing of my day with intentional actions and activities that will grow me, and that's over, and I said it, and I'm gonna do it, and it's done. Well, you can. It's just that most people don't. So. I'm not going to get into all of that today, why this over the, why the 90 day design book over another planner, but the process that I want to give you today is all wrapped up in the design your life, live your vision, 90 day planner. If you want more instructions on using the planner, go to PamelaShaw.pink, start at the beginning and you're going to see where I'm going with this. Okay. We need a good bit of conversation around all of that. The 90 day planner invites that self conversation every day throughout the day in between each week and throughout the 90 days. You'll be considering through the planner, through the working the planner, you'll be considering the daily and weekly thoughts over and over and over again. The daily, weekly thoughts, behaviors, habits, actions, business tasks, the things that advance you in the direction you want to go. Otherwise, you'll forget. You'll write them down once at the beginning of the week. You've got them on your goal poster. They're in your goal book someplace, and then you forget. How many times have you written something down? You know, even like in the course of the day, you know, what you are or aren't gonna do. And by the end of the day, you forgot. And it'll be weeks before you look back to where you wrote it and go, oh my gosh, I forgot I even wrote that. The, the 90 day planner, what it does is remind you over and over and over again, you have the opportunity to write it again and write it again and write it again. Oh yes, you will forget. The inability to remember is what causes almost every setback that any of us has. So don't make me give you my old examples, my same old examples. So are you ready to blast off these next 90 days? That's what we're gonna do. So number one, number one, for the next 90 days, we're going to first define, define what you really want to accomplish. That's the first thing. If you don't define it, you're already where you're gonna be December 1st. So the number one thing is define it. Um, 
in the pie chart of your life, if you draw a circle and, and you put all the different areas of your life in that pie, there are times when you give more to one area than to another. And these represent your core values. When you're giving more to your physical and health, you're giving, you have the value more at that time about your health. When you're giving more to your financial in a season of life, you're giving more to that core value. So these represent core values and when you're in alignment with what you say is important to you and how you live every day, there is a congruency and a peace and usually increase in growth. So this self-honesty, it makes you trustworthy. It makes you magnetic. It makes your authenticity shine. So when you're trying to act like you're in one place, when you're really in another place, not only do you lack peace in your own spirit, but others can snip it out. It's like they know it's fake. So on a scale from zero to five, zero, no effort whatsoever right now, and five, you're giving it intentional effort with goals and accountability and a lot of time and mental energy. Consider where you are in all of these seven categories. Now these are goal categories in your design book as well, but in your pie of life, this is what, comp this is what contains who you are. Number one, your spiritual and personal growth on a scale of zero to five, how much time and attention are you giving to growth? Not necessarily practice. Maybe you spent years giving growth to your spiritual life. Maybe you've done BSF, for example, for 25 years. So you have the habit of a daily quiet time and you get up and you go straight there with your coffee and that's ingrained. It's a piece of who you are. You could say right now that you're giving one to growth. Maybe you're not in a study right now, but you're still in a solid quiet time. It doesn't mean that you're not giving attention to the spiritual aspect of your life or the personal growth. It's just saying you're not doing a lot of it right now. If right now you're in the middle of the heat of a study and you're learning and your mind is lit up and you're accountable with other people and you're doing more than you normally do and you're listening to something on Audible and you're reading another book in the car when you're having to wait on someone at night before you fall asleep and you are in major growth mode, ideas are everywhere, that's a five. So I'm going to give you the rest of the categories and your spiritual, zero to five. How about your family? Number three, career. Number four, your physical and health. Number five, social. Number six, educational, and number seven, financial. So of these seven categories in your pie of life, zero to five, where are you giving energy and time and growth right now? If you say they're all about the same, I'll tell you a little secret, it's not good. You're not growing, you're on autopilot. You know when you're growing because growth hurts. Growth costs you, growth costs sacrifice, growth makes you go after new information and apply it, Growth is an air is when you're growing, you know it. You don't have to wonder. So if you're like, I don't even know what to put down here, well, that might not be good. Now, maybe you haven't given it consideration and you just need some alone time to do it and you need to stop talking so that you can go think about it. So maybe you need to think about it later when we stop. So may just make a note to come back to the beginning of your notes. But in those seven categories, spiritual, personal growth, two, family, three, career. Hey, anytime I'm giving lists of stuff, will somebody be the secretary and write this in the chat? Because I got to tell you, I don't have my glasses on. I can't see. <laughs> so if anybody knows the answers to anything anybody else is asking, please answer them on my behalf because I know a lot of you are, are great students of the design your life process so I'll trust your answers but if somebody would write them down while we're going that would be super helpful so in the pie of your life the seven categories are spiritual personal growth number two family number three career number four your physical fitness your health your wellness number five your social life uh, connecting with other people number six educational and number seven financial Okay, obviously you want your life to be well-rounded and to be intentional and excel in each of these areas at some point throughout your life, but right now, what amount of attention, zero to five, are you currently giving to those? And here's the second piece to that. Zero to five, what do you want to be giving attention to in any of those categories for the next 90 days? Okay, so my Texas friends. We walk to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Number one, physiological needs. Some of you are still looking for and getting, but you're on this need. Food, water, warmth, and rest. And then the second, on the, on the second part of that triangle, that's the basic, the second part of that triangle is safety needs, safety and security. Um, and those are basic for all people. So as I speak to goals beyond those givens, I'm not being insensitive. We often take those things for granted. Um, but again, we are with you. And so we're going to keep 
we're going to keep moving along up that hierarchy at this point. So to jump time, I'm going to remind you that for any 90-day window of time, you'll be best served to pick only three categories, okay? I keep getting closer to my camera like I'm going to talk to you closer. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize I'm like standing on top of my phone. I'm like, where's my arm? <laughs> okay, I don't mean to get that close up. All right, all right. I'm going to remind you that you don't want to pick more than three categories to work on at a time, okay? And then within those three, one that is going to get the most attention. One for you these next 90 days. Which one category? One, three total one, you're going to really give it everything you've got. Three, you're going to give attention to, have goals for, but one, you're going to rock it. So what will that outcome be for that one category on December 1st? That is important for you to know. List, list the categories and list the goals. This is your starting point. And this is your, home, this is your first homework for tonight. You start here and then you, you, you realize what you've done. You drove from where you are in a car, 90 miles an hour, whoo, all the way to your destination. Because here's where you're standing, there's where you're gonna be December 1st. You've gotta go all the way out there. Then you gotta put the car in reverse and come back. And now you put the goals together, okay? You reverse goal set. You, you drive 90 miles an hour all the way out to your goal, December 1st, 2017, and then you put it in reverse and you come all the way back here. And now your goals are what you're going to do September, October, and November, these next 90 days. And that's going to take you closer to December 1st. Are you excited about this? I hope you are. So, um, list the goals, and this is where you're going to start, and this is how we're going to design your game plan, okay? So, what will your roadmap from, from there to here, what will your roadmap um, the most direct route, apart from detours and construction, what's it going to look like? What is it going to look like? And you can't play dumb here. You cannot play dumb. You have to own this. You have to design this. You have to know what activity will result in what win. You can't go, I don't know. Of course you do. Yes, you do. Um, and so take the time and write it out. There's a willing coach in your life who will be your brainstorm backdrop and your guide to get clear. But until you do these steps, you're already at your December 1st designation. It's going to be the same as where you're standing right now because these steps are critical. You've got to dream, decide, choose the categories, set the goals, go all the way out there. What's the result? And now back it up and put the steps, create the roadmap to get there, and then stay on course, which is going to be another part of it. But you know what? Um, you don't love this? <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you, don't love, you don't love this? Well, then heed this advice. Pick an area to grow and give it all you've got. State the goal specifically. Go all the way out, know what the victory is, what's required, and then back it up. What are the steps? This will take you about an hour to do, okay? So I want you to, to recognize on the front end, you're gonna need an hour alone without any interruption, a critical hour. When you're what, what you want to accomplish by December 1st, and your why, why you want what you want, when your what and your why, why do you want it, who will it benefit, how will they benefit, what will it feel like when you accomplish this, who will you tell, who will celebrate with you, what will they say about you when you succeed, what's your why, because when your what and your why have clarity and alignment. How? How do I do it? That's never the question. How is a question for people whose what has faded and whose why has gotten dim? Clear people find creativity to match their what and their why and that creativity and commitment opens up how. You will never ask how questions when you're what, bam, I know where I'm gonna be December 1st and your why. Here's the reason. How Honestly, how shows up in courage. 
Hal shows up in what you haven't been willing to do. All of a sudden, you'll be courageous enough to do what you've been unwilling to do because your what is you're just sick and tired of saying it again and not getting there. And now you know that you know that you know that your what and your why are lining up how courage becomes how because you really already know what to do. Courage just starts to show you. Okay, so here are the action steps for number one. Number one, if you didn't catch it, was define the goal and get really clear on what is going to be your December 1st victory. Here are your action steps. Number one, what is your what? Number two, what is your why? Write it out tonight. You know what? Post it back on here. Let me know. I will go back and scroll and read these when I'm waiting for an appointment or in a, in a lag in some part of my day or or intentionally looking at social media, um, I will go back and I will read your comments. I would love if you wanna share or private message me. I want to know what's your what and what's your why. Okay, I'm getting ready to go to number two. If you haven't shared the video yet, go ahead and share it to your friends uh, page and let your friends see it, your family and friends, because they'll they'll be able to start from the very top once they, once they watch it, if they decide if they want to or not. Okay, number two. I told you we were going to dig in on getting a focus. We've got, we've got the defined clarity of what you want. Now, how do you focus? You know, it sounds like a lot, a lot of these words sound the same. You know, you're going to define your goal and then set your plan. And now you're going to focus. A lot of the words can say the same. I don't want you to hear the same thing. We're going to focus differently. I've had people all my career try and convince me that they can't focus, that they're not like me or somebody else who seems focused. And, um, you know, I, I don't think anybody has a natural focus. I don't think anybody has a natural focus. And in today's society with social media and clanging coming at us all the time, it takes tremendous effort to intentionally focus. I had the privilege of speaking from stage at Diamond Seminar this year. And a good bit of uh, time I invested in considering the words that I would share because I was timed and they would gong me and pull me off the stage if I stayed on there too long. So I'll, I'm going to paraphrase myself. <laughs> I, you won't be you won't be as harsh on me and, and I don't have to weigh every single word <laughs> so I'm gonna paraphrase myself okay focus looks a lot different from what you think it does okay it, it really it just does your brain is lit up in too many places when you have the news on in the background and you're scrolling social media while you eat your breakfast and have conversation with your kid as they go out the door to school that is not focus your prefrontal cortex cannot focus with all of that jumbled input. So what you put in, what you put in is going to come out. You cannot import one type of information, hatred, division, half-truths, and export another, love, patience, truth. Focus means turn it all off. <laughs> turn it off. Turn off the notifications, bells and whistles, TV, all the noise, more than just during your quiet time. Whatever you're doing, making calls, making a message, making a list, focus is your friend. So when I was writing this yesterday, I wanted to watch college football. I love college football. I love football. Um, I tried to write with the game on in the background, and um, but I'm a football fan, and I get involved in the game. So I turned the game off, and I made a bargain with myself. Until I get this written, I cannot have a snack, I cannot go to the refrigerator, and I cannot watch football. Um, it was about 2.30. I knew my brain would not be its best past 6 p.m. in terms of thinking and being creative, and the game's gonna be over by then. And so Pamela, sit down, focus, turn everything off, and just do it. Three, two, one, go. I created my own activation ritual. There was nobody here to tell me to do it, nobody here to bargain with me. I just, I had to be my own coach. So I did. That little mental process is what I call building a non-negotiable lifestyle with myself. More on that later. I'm excited to get to that part. So now I want to take focus a step further. If I have these three categories that I know that I want to grow and advance the next 90 days, I have a lot flying around in my head. So I have to streamline the focus, not just down to the goal pathway, but down to the minute. I have a lot of work to do. This ain't gonna happen in your traditional date book, by the way. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do the goal breakdown process here, but what I am going to do is go through at the end of a seven day section of your 90 day planner, and I'm gonna walk you through setting this up with focus, setting up your next week by considering how this week went. 
And since I'm teaching this on a Sunday night tonight, how this is so perfect to set your week up this next week. So if you have a design book, know that I'm in that middle section. And right now I'm in the middle of an edit. I'm editing the book. But to be frugal and to be a good steward of what I've already invested in printing, uh, I've got to finish and move through the books that I have before I can print and sell the other ones. So let me show you where I am in the book because I'm super excited about this. So you're gonna need some whiteout and you're gonna need some pens to make yours uh, look like mine. Okay, so this is, we're starting with where the week has ended. Can you see how I've redesigned it a little bit? So get an idea because you're gonna need some whiteout and um, some pens to follow through with what I'm doing. See, I've redesigned this. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I've done. And in the new ones that are purchased, I'm gonna start putting in an insert so that you can have this until the new ones are printed. And then I've got my weekly plan sheet put together for this week. So that's where I am and that's where I'm getting ready uh, to teach you from, okay? So uh, I'm gonna walk you through setting this up. So um, even uh, if you have a design book, first of all, I'm just making it richer for you. I'm making it more simple. I'm making it more of a self uh, walkthrough of, of, the, of the process. I'm making the, the self-guiding of it more intentional. So when you do this, you're gonna have to get still and get quiet and you're gonna set up a more successful week this week than last one. And that's how you grow. That you set up a better week this week and that you have a better week this week. That's how you grow. Okay, so we're on the page. After seven days, we're on the page and it says the week has ended. So those in between pages between two weeks. You know where I am, right? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Yes, we know where you are. The week has ended. It's a two page centerfold before um, the weekly plan sheet to set it up. The first thing that is there correctly um, that, that I'm going to leave there is reflect. Reflect on this past week and answer the question, what did I do well? What did I do well? Okay, just so that you have an idea of the kinds of things. You, you, if you're thinking that we're looking for you know, something major, we're not looking for something major. Okay, uh, what did I do well? Here's what mine says. I, my workouts, I did really good workouts last week. Um, I had good coaching conversations. Um, we closed the month out well. And uh, messages that I made to teach and to share, um, I, fe I felt like I did a good job with on-target messages, whether they were Instagram memes and short messages or uh, Voxer training messages. Those are the four things that I felt like I did well. Okay, now here's what comes next. The next R, these are all R words. R, review. Review your long-term, short-term goals. So that means you have to go back to the beginning of the design book, beginning of your planner, back where you first wrote out your goals in your wildest dreams. Go back to where you wrote your goals. Here are your goals. Here are your goals. Go back, read them, review them, make comments, note what are, do you remember that you had these goals? If you're reviewing them in between every week, you're going to stay on course. I promise you that you are. So number two is review. Number three is rewrite. Rewrite your goals. Rewrite them in a condensed version. And I just have five little lines there. Rewrite your five top goals. Then the next R on this same page is reconsider. There are two questions here that I've asked myself and, I, and I'm putting in the book. Reconsider. Where did I lose focus last week? Where did I lose focus last week? My answer, it was in food preparation. It was in the preparation factor. I lost focus in the preparation. I didn't take last Sunday to set it up. So I wrote that down. And then I, another question is, you know, where did I lose courage last week? Another question is, what can I improve? This is all under reconsider. Now, the next R word is realign, realign. The question under realign is simply this, what will make this a winning week? What will make this a winning week? Okay, then you're gonna flip the page and you're gonna go to the next, uh, you're gonna go to the next page and it says, it's a new week, design it. Check the past week for undone tasks. So go back for the seven days. Is there anything that you didn't do that you need to bring forward? Write it down. 
check master task list to see if anything makes this week's list. You know, you've got the master personal and master business tasks to get everything off your brain and in your book. Go back and just scan through those. Is there anything on those master tasks that needs to join you this week? And then the next R word is reprioritize. Under reprioritize, there are two, uh, two things. Reprioritize, number one, what are my top three things this week? What are my top three things that I want to accomplish, that I want to nail, that I want to make sure I get? What are my top three things this week? And then, and then the next question is, what are three key behaviors that will support my win? What three key behaviors will support my win? That's reprioritize. This is critical because this is giving you an opportunity to say, yes, I'm in it or no, I'm not. When you reprioritize these three things, you're going to be going back and you're going to be addressing that pie of life, one of those three er uh, goal areas that you're going to give the most attention to. What are my top three things this week? What three key behaviors? And then the next R word is redesign. You redesign by number one, putting your weekly plan sheet together. There's one on the next page of your design planner. Number two, put a yellow sticky pad on each page. A yellow sticky. This is one of the most successful components of the design book. And it, in my opinion, the best thing I ever uh, designed, created, and copyrighted. And it's this yellow sticky pad. It's set by a half hour at a time. If you have something on a list, but it does not have an appointment with you, it will never get done. It will stay on the list. If you say at nine o'clock, I'm going to ABC, it has a much larger opportunity to hit the list and keep moving forward. So this is how I keep appointments. In addition to the fold-out calendar that exists for six months on one side and six months on the other side, which works perfectly well for me and I travel all around the world, this part of your day is your money. It's half hour to park. That's all the time there is. And if what you want to accomplish tomorrow doesn't fit in one of those time slots, guess what? You're not going to accomplish it. So put a yellow sticky pad on each of your seven days and then set smartphone appointments if you need to set smartphone alarms. I just set another smartphone alarm today. What was it for? See, I don't know, but my phone will tell me when it's time to do it. Um, I set alarms like on, on, you know, on your calendar where it shows you who has a birthday and whatever else is going on. I have alarms, oh, one went off while I was talking. Write your unit shout out for tomorrow. Well, I had to put that in a different alarm because tomorrow's Labor Day and my assistant isn't coming in, so my unit will receive a shout out on Tuesday. But my alarm told me tonight to do it tonight because lots of times, Kayla will come in, she goes, where's the shout out? I'm like, oh, I forgot to write it. So about a year ago, I started sending myself an alarm. I get it every Sunday night. I get an alarm to back up my computer. I get an alarm to set my workout watch 15 minutes before I go to the gym. I have an alarm to listen to my morning affirmations. I have an alarm to listen to my evening affirmations. Why? Because these are habits that I want to create. And so until I know to do them day after day after day after day, I just set alarms to do them. So set, number three is set smartphone alarms for anything that you want to uh, do tomorrow. And then number four is design your six most important things for tomorrow and set up your day. And then the last R word is recommit. This is an important piece. It's easy to say, oh, by December 1st, I'm going to be, duh. By December 1st, I'm going to have accomplished, duh. By December 1st, yes, I got you. You define it, yes. Focus, I got it. I can turn off my TV. Recommit. Recommit at the beginning of the week. So it asks you for two things. What's your one thing this week? What have you got to make happen this week? There is one thing more important than everything else. What's your one thing? And then what's your one word? The beginning of every year, I create a word or a phrase that's just going to take me through the, through the year and for the distance. They've been different things. Uh, maybe four years ago, I think one that I had was all is well. Um, all was a well. <laughs> but I knew that in the supernatural all was well that God had me and that the circumstances were not going to be the end of the story. And so all is well became my go-to to remind me of the countless promises that God has given to his people uh, for the benefit of their lives. Um, a year after that, it was I trust you, Lord. In the middle of what maybe might not go well or might be ha causing me to have to make a big decision, um, I trust you, Lord. This year, it's one word. It's just align. My 
my one thing that I do this week, I, I get, but my one word is align. Because I want everything that I say, everything that I do, my relationship with my girlfriends, uh, what I give to the categories of my life, to my family, to my son, to my business. I want there to be alignment. That who I say I am is who I am. That what I teach is what I know. And that there is uh, integrity in that process. That the decisions that I make with my time, my yes and my no, it aligns with my values and my goals. I'm not constantly saying yes, yes I'll go this, yes I'll do that, yes I'll be that, yes I, I don't. I'm not the yes person because I am very clear about what God has called me to. Now sometimes I have to press pause and weigh, weigh it and wrestle that a little bit, pray it out before I come up with a decision, but I want all of that to align. So that word reminds me every single week. This process in between each seven days, it's your money. It's your growth. It's your promotion. This process in between each seven days, it's your money. It's your critical inch. It's your critical inch of growth. It's your cutting edge elevation. It's the pathway to growth and change. We are and we do need that much reinforcement and reminder of our own design and our life goals. We've got to be reminded and we've got to remind ourselves. Okay, here's the action step for number two. Ready? I got to move fast. Where can you design a greater focus as you set up your week tonight? How can you create a greater focus? What can you turn off? What can you, uh, how can you isolate? How can you get away? How can you make what you're doing have greater focus? That's the first thing. Second thing for this is what noise that you haven't considered robs your focus during the day that you will intentionally change? What noise is robbing your focus? Maybe noise you haven't considered until now. And then third, What's your one thing this week? This is your homework. What's your one thing this week that if you do it, it will make everything else less necessary or not necessary at all? What one thing will be your change agent this week? Okay, number three. I told you I was gonna talk about your secret weapon, right? Well, your secret weapon is in your daily routine. Your secret weapon is in your daily routine. Where you are right now, is the accumulation of your previous days, your thoughts and your actions. It's the accumulation of your previous days, thoughts and actions, where you are right now. So if you want radically different results in the next 90 days, you've gotta interrupt your current pattern. Interrupt your pattern. Hashtag interrupt your pattern. Hashtag frame your day. Frame your day. I've made messages about both of these concepts there that I have now branded with Design Your Life because they're topics that I take tremendous ownership in. Interrupt your pattern is an easy concept. When you feel lazy, stop it. <laughs> when, you, when you go to social media uh, to get your fix instead of making booking calls or pre-profiling calls or guests or scheduling career chats or some other aspect of your business that has to do with growth, when you find yourself scrolling, stop it. When you head to the refrigerator to get the peanut butter, who, me? Interrupt your pattern. Interrupt your pattern. Identify, consider the alternative, count to yourself. You're going for the refrigerator, I'm going for the refrigerator. And on my way to the refrigerator, I'm recognizing I'm going for the peanut butter. I said I wasn't gonna eat peanut butter until I hit this goal. Three, two, one, go in a different direction. It, it, that's all, and do the right thing. So not easy. <laughs> easy but it's doable and winning leaders whatever that is for most of you it's not peanut butter and for me it's not okay it is peanut butter but it's not the only thing I've got bigger problems than peanut butter but peanut butter is one of them <laughs> uh, successful leaders reign victorious more of the time than not when they talk to themselves this way when your what and your why have clarity and when you are focused on setting up a winning week and a winning day and when you are willing to interrupt your pattern of laziness or procrastination or media scrolling now there's something that I want to grab onto and put a magnifying glass on right now you all know that this 90-day planner comes with a yellow sticky pad to design your day one half hour at a time these new habits and tasks that are the pathway to your goal at the end of the 90 days they fit in these half hour time slots and if they don't you won't do them if you don't do them then you're going to be in the same place December 1st 90 days from now dr. John Maxwell says that nothing changes until you change 
change something that you do every single day. There's a section in the 90 day planner to state habits that you're going to build. I'm going to build the habit of blank to replace the habit of blank. And it gives you space for three habits every 90 days. So if you're intentional, that's 12 habits a year. Do you know how few people develop 12 intentional good habits a year? But if you're following your 90-day planner, you can develop 12 intentional 90-day habits a year, 12 intentional habits that you decide. Wow, do you have any idea what kind of growth that is? That is like growth on steroids. That is crazy growth. It sounds easy. But when the habits recur or haunt you or tempt you severely, you have to back up. What is back up? Well, for some temptations and for some reasons, when you have a recurring temptation or recurring habit, what's back up? Back up could be, I mean, let's keep it real. It could be a recovery group. It could be a sponsor. Maybe it's a pastor. Back up for this habit, it could look like a counselor, a small group, a life coach, an accountability buddy, a club or a team but no matter what your habit that you're working to create the new one for whether it's recurring or whether it's new you need guardrails you need guardrails I used to work at Mammoth Cave National Park I was a GS5 thank you very much fives could throw torches but in, in Mammoth Cave there was this place called bottomless pit and we would tell people who would come to visit the cave not to get too close to the edge because bottomless pit was, well, let's say it was pretty deep and really we did not want people falling into it. But do you know what people did? <laughs> people would walk right up to the edge of the bottomless pit with water and mud and it was slippery. So the National Park Service put up guardrails and then they put up a fence and then they put up a fence with a wall. The guardrails served as a non-negotiable for the temptation of people who wanted to get too close. People could not get too close to bottomless pit when the guardrails went up. So I create guardrails, non-negotiables in my day. The more non-negotiables I set up in my day so that I don't have to negotiate and renegotiate and renegotiate in the, in the moment. If I have to negotiate in the moment, the odds of me losing are strong because my emotions are taking over. I'm not in the middle of my design book. I'm not looking at my goals. My emotions are what are driving me. So if I have to negotiate in the moment, I could lose because my emotions are more powerful than my memory. My emotions in the moment are more powerful and predominant than my memory. So I've got to put up guardrails. So when my feelings are louder than my vision and when my emotions seem louder than my leadership vision or my reputation, when my fear is big or my desire is faint, when it feels like that it doesn't matter what I do or that I have more time and I can do this tomorrow, the more successful I'll be at staying on course, following through, doing the task, creasing the new habit, getting a new business result, growing in that area of my life if I have guardrails. If when I don't feel like it, I don't have to renegotiate, I'm going to win. If I don't have to negotiate in the moment when I don't feel like it, even when I don't feel like it, if I don't have to negotiate, I'm going to win. Examples. Workout clothes laid out on my heated bathroom floor before I go to bed. Every garment, panties, jog bra, socks, tank top, workout uh, pants, ev shoes, everything laid out. Everything. As, as, as consistently as I set the coffee in my coffee pot, I consistently set out my workout clothes because I don't have to negotiate through one more decision in the morning other than putting on the clothes because they're all it's all there I'm not missing anything it all fits I know how it looks together I don't have to decide in the morning when my emotions are bigger than my goal see where I'm going that creates a non-negotiable in my morning that's one example another example is before I go to bed I frame you know how I talk about framing the day, frame your morning, frame your evening, the first two hours of your day, the last hour of your day, those are the most critical. When you frame those two hours, uh, three hours of your day, the first two, the last one, successful people do that, you're going to have better habits than your average person. So when I frame my day in the evening, I preset my coffee because if by chance I sleep past 5.30 or 5.45, by 5.55 I smell coffee. That gets me out of bed. What gets you out of bed? 
My breakfast is pre-decided. I don't have to decide in the morning what I'm going to eat or what time I'm going to eat because I've timed my breakfast with my workout, which is the same. And so breakfast, pre-deciding it, it keeps me from choosing a Pop-Tart. <laughs> and so I've already decided it, so I don't have to renegotiate that in the morning. Meeting a group of people to work out at the same time of day every day, that keeps me accountable to the workout. If I don't show up and I haven't told somebody, my text will be blowing up. Where are you? I mean, I would like to think that a couple people will check on me. They will. Writing down my food in pencil tonight for, as to what I'm going to eat tomorrow gives me an idea tomorrow so that in the emotion of the moment, I'm not having to decide in the middle of hunger. If I'm having to decide in the middle of emotion, I will lose. But the guardrail is creating a non-negotiable. Deciding in advance and giving myself some clues before I hit that emotion tomorrow. Preparing veggies and grilling chicken on Sundays gives me less wiggle room when I'm starving because the food has already been pre Paired. When I know where I normally lose it in the patterns that I have ingrained, I have to work intentionally to dim the moments of negotiation. So, will I lose and repeat a pattern that isn't serving me well? Or will I win and deepen my new habit uh, that when repeated over time, it accumulates and then it gives me a different result, a different outcome for my present status? That is my roadmap. That is my pathway. That is my most direct route without detours on my way to December 1st, my 90-day victory. This is a critical key. Put the guardrails up and create your non-negotiables. You can take this to the bank. You can take it to the beach in a bikini. <laughs> you can take it to your company awards program. You can take your hot husband across the world <laughs> on a great trip to serve your passion. But the reality is, this is a key in the 90-day process that works. You going to get that out of your appointment book? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so here's your action step for this one. What three times in your day that you could benefit, what are three times in your day that you could benefit by having these less negotiable moments. Where do you need guardrails in your day and for what three things? Write them down. How will you put up these guardrails? So this week I got an email from uh, Propel. It's a ministry that I follow and it said this. When Joshua got marching orders to cross the Jordan River and lead God's people to their new home, God told Joshua, remember that I commanded you to be strong and be brave. Don't be afraid. Because the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. If you believe that the leadership pathway that you're on is something that God has called you to, then I, I'm going to say to you, be strong and courageous and don't be afraid. Because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Leaders must do what needs to be done. In spite of fear, but courage doesn't just, it's not just for the battlefield. As a leader, it's also for the office. As a leader, it's for the classroom. It's for the home. I, will, uh, I was watching the Texas governor talk about, uh, to someone about how, how Texas is going to rebuild. And one of the things he cited was there's great leadership in every community. There, we have great mayors in every city. There's great leadership everywhere. So I will add that right now great leadership is for the flood. It's for the entrepreneur. Wherever there's responsibility, there is a great need for courage. So in your many roles, whatever they may be this week, find the courage to work through difficult situations. Find the courage to do what's unpopular. Find the courage to admit that you're wrong, to handle conflicting opinions. Find the courage to have confidence, to face a season of transition. Find the courage to put up your guardrails. Find the courage to speak your goal to someone else that matters. Find the courage to break out of your comfort zone. Find the courage to say no to fear and insecurity. Recognize your own value and worth and risk failure. Courage doesn't mean that you'll never feel any fear. It just means being filled with more faith than fear. Don't let fear or any other emotion hold you back from your calling or your destiny. Don't let any emotion hold you back from your calling and your destiny. Emotions and feelings, they lure you away from becoming what who God has called you to be. Emotions and feelings, they lure you away from doing income-producing activities, from growth-producing habits, 
They lure you away from the higher investments of your time and towards procrastination and leisure and entertainment. Don't get me wrong, there's a time for all things, including leisure. It takes courage to decide the life to design it, the one you want to live and to take action on, and steps that will build the life that you feel called to live. I wanna remind you, success is in the push. It's in the push. If it was easy, everybody would do the thing that you wanna accomplish that feels large and worth it. Emotions say, wait, or tomorrow, this isn't gonna make a difference, but courage says, three, two, one, go. Push. Make the best over a good decision. Interrupt your pattern and put up your guardrails and go ahead and be strong and courageous this week. Be intentional and be focused and be clear and have your best week ever and have your best 90 days ever. If you want more information, if you want to be a student more of, of Design Your Life process, go to PamelaShaw.pink. Share this video with your family and friends so they know what you're after. They don't think you've like just kind of gone crazy, or maybe they will after they watch me. Then they'll think we're all certifiably crazy. That's okay. That is okay. We'll take that because I'd rather be at a new destination on December 1st because I'm hitting a goal that's on my heart that I really know will make a difference that will serve other people um, and I would rather be there than to be in the same place with regret and remorse and guilting myself out of it 2017 can be your best ever and I want to celebrate so you're gonna send me your what and your why right do your homework there are three sections for it take the time go grab an hour there's still some daylight and it's still quiet you can find a quiet place before tomorrow set your week up this week do all of those wor r words reflect review realign redesign you know them all do that and uh, man i just pray i just pray that god gives you a fantastic